So I was, uh, I was doing really deep research on you. Um, <laughs> we were back at the bar? Yeah. Uh, no, I was just reading Wikipedia. Um, and the one, the one thing really jumped out at me, so I wanted to start with the beginning, one of the first things that you ever did. Apparently, you made $1,000 as a kid um, on a chain letter. Yep. So you're college. that guy who I'm actually... That guy. <laughs> who actually made money with one of those things. Yeah, it was my junior year in college and I had to figure out a way to pay for school, so they had one of these chain letters going around and so I just said, okay, well, somebody's making money. So I would go around and it was a deal where um, you gave me $50 and sent $50 to the person at the top of the list, took him off and then put your name at the bottom. And what I did was I helped everybody, all my friends sell their version so they got all their money back and then it, you know, the power of networking, right, back then, it just took off. and. I spent the next few weeks just going to my mailbox every morning collecting $50 checks and cashing them, and I paid for my junior year of college. That's quite a story. It seems like that's been happening to you ever since. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think there is more work involved uh, more recently. Um, you're well known for having opinions. Yep. Um, and so I'm hoping to elicit a number of them from you. Um, as a matter of fact, you have so many hot button issues, I wasn't really sure which one to start with. Um, but but I, we may as well start with, given I think it's been in the air all the, the past two days, um, which is the economy. Mm -hmm. um, you've written on your, on your site, um, uh, you've, you've posted a number of opinions about the economy, uh, about bankers uh, in particular, uh, and about modest proposals for how to fix it. So what do you think is wrong, and, and, and how, do we, how do we correct it? <laughs> Just a simple question like that, right? Solve it for us. Uh, solve it for us. I think the, the primary problem that we're facing, I think, and everybody's recognizing this, is bipartisanship, right? Every, everybody, everybody's so partisan in their feelings, right? Everybody think, is so philosophically driven that no one's addressing issues. And so I think we have to get out of politics and actually have action items. You know, we fail to recognize that at some point, things change and you have to let go of, of old dogmas and old philosophies and just deal with what's in front of you like in business. And so I, you know, it's just little simple things that we all know are obvious. We get, we get a budget from the, our government leaders, that's a 10 year budget. Who does 10 year budgets? You know, how are you gonna fix something in 10 years? Even the communist countries have five year budgets and five year plans. You know, and then there's, there's action items. One of the things I wrote was, you know, we have to fix the, the housing situation. Um, we had a bubble, it burst, we have significant problems, the values have gone down. And to me, the action item is, all these homes that have been foreclosed on that Fannie Mae, et cetera, own, you bulldoze them. Right? You tear them down, you reduce the supply, that increases the um, value of what's there. You create work for people who are most difficult to employ. All they gotta do is you know, knock things down. You know, that's an action item. Um, there's just so many things that, that you can come up to do, but we have to recognize that someone's gotta come in and propose actions. And then I think there's, you know, I've talked to a lot of people have asked me um, about taxes. And you know, the headline going out was Cubans willing to pay as much as he needs to in taxes, et cetera. I hate taxes. I hate taxes as much as the next guy. Well, you said that paying taxes is the it's most patriotic pa thing you can do. But when you look at the economy the way it is, right, you can't just, again, go back to philosophies or dogma. You have to recognize the circumstances and contribute. And I've earned quite a bit from not just Yahoo, but um, you know, the fact that you can be entrepreneurial in this country. There's infrastructure, there's people who have given their lives for, to create that opportunity for me. And for me, in the current state of things, you have to be able to give back. And for any entrepreneur in here, going out there, busting your butt, being rewarded economically, the most patriotic thing you can do is pay taxes because you know, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And I think you can just go down a long list of action items, but until we start taking action instead of talking about things in, in general broad brushes, we're gonna have problems. So are, would you say you're in the Buffett camp, so to speak, in terms of uh, you're not paying enough taxes? Yes. Now, do I like, you know, will I like writing a bigger check? No, because I think a big percentage of it is, is going to go to waste. I think we, there's a big difference between investing and spending. Right, right now, we don't have somebody who's a chief, chief investment officer. Look at Google. Google invests things left and right, but it's an investment. Not all of them are going to work, but they create opportunity, and that's, we don't have anybody in government who's looking at that. We can borrow money at, you know, essentially negative interest rates. 
we should be spending them in investments as opposed to spending them on expenses. And there's a big difference, and I don't think you know, anybody in, in our government structure right now understands the difference. You, you um, have said to sort of switch to another part of one of your rants has to do with the way that our current regulations are, are, are set up for patent law. Right. For example, um, your uh, approach to patent law is similar to your them. approach to, to houses that are on the market, which yeah, is get to rid of bulldoze them. it. Um, can, can you elaborate a bit? Look, it's crazy. I'll give you an example. One of my companies, you're talking about things that inhibit um, job growth, inhibit um, corporate growth, um, inhibit entrepreneurships. I have a company, Magnolia um, Home Video. We distribute DVDs. We got um, sued because someone has a patent for detecting scene changes in video that they were re awarded in mid-2000s, 2004 or five, right? We were doing scene detection of video back in the you know, late 1990s, but back then we just didn't create patents for everything. And you've got all these patents that are being awarded that are just out there just to try to siphon money from people. And that's, to me, that's killing commerce. That's hurting. I mean, I read something from the former CTO of Apple who said that when he left in 1989, Apple owned the grand sum of one patent. Boy, they've changed their ways now, haven't they? <laughs> um, and so, to me, I, I recognize that people say, you know what, small guy has a great idea, or small woman has a great idea, and wants to protect their idea, they need a patent. But for that one anecdotal scenario where you protect that one person, there are 99% other scenarios where you're holding back the economy, you're holding back big companies. And so Google has to go out and buy Motorola for a patent trove, and it becomes a game of thermo, you know, you know, thermonuclear war. You know, who can create the, the greatest deterrent to keep someone from dropping the bomb? And that is not good for the economy, that's not good for entrepreneurship, that's not good for the United States. Well, I mean, you brought up Google, so I, I want to ask you a question, because you've written uh, about the company quite a bit. And, I, much, and, and so I get to ask a question that, 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 that our host has agreed I'm allowed to ask, or at least they said, okay, John, you can. <laughs> What's your view of YouTube? What a horrible acquisition. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Care to unpack that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> And, and everybody get it out. You talk about horrible acquisitions. Okay, Yahoo, okay, that's out of the way. All right. <laughs> but in reality, what does YouTube evolve to? It's a utility that, in essence, subsidized the bandwidth for video of the world. Now, how can that be a bad thing? Well, it's not bad for us, right? But in reality, from a business perspective, what if they really, you can do that any time. They didn't have to go out and buy YouTube. They had Google Video. All they had to do was say, whatever video you have, you just post it and we'll pay for all the, the upload, the bandwidth and everything, the servers, the storage. They, they didn't need to buy a company to do it, so they took all their baggage, they're still fighting legally all their baggage, and I think if you said right now, are they in the best possible position they could be in the video world relative to everybody else? Well, they've had a great social impact. Their content ID system is phenomenal. We wouldn't have that if they didn't have all the lawyers to fight. So they've had a lot of great developments, but they could have started back then and going out and doing the things they're doing today and be 10 times further ahead. I don't think they accomplished anything by buying YouTube at all. Um, you mentioned earlier that one of your pictures got you in trouble. You get in trouble a lot. How you know, come? Because I just don't give a shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> Look, somebody had to be the, the luckiest guy in the world, like Mr. Chopra was saying, you know, all the endorphins, everything. Mine are flashing all the time, but you know, I don't have to be looking at someone I'm in love. I'm just, I'm having fun. And so I, I've gotten to a position now, I think, where I don't need anything from y'all, right? And so if it's, you know, let's just say what's on my mind, as long as I do the work, you can disagree with me. And, and I like when people disagree with me. I like when it gets public and it becomes a public argument because people have to bring their A game to disagree. And to me, that, that's, that's fun, right? I like challenging things. I like being able to look at it. You know, my strength is not being out teching somebody else. I'm not going to understand all the personalized medicine elements, even though I think personalized medicine is the future. I'm not going to, you know, be able to write code like, you know, even though I used to. That's not me. I'm able to, to look at a business, drill down to it very, very quickly and understand what's going on and challenge it. And I like to challenge it. You know, it's like day and date movies. You know, the, the head of the movie, MPAA said I was the devil because we wanted to release movies day and date with DVD and theatrical. So when he said it's horrible to do it the same day, I said, 
I'll kick your ass even better. So we're going to release our movies onto transactional VOD on cable and satellite, et cetera, systems a month before they're in theaters. Now our business, our Magnolia Home District, makes money on every movie. That's unheard of in the movie industry. So where you, where you can look at things and say, this is the way they've always been done, I like to look at it and say, well, if everybody's doing this way, that's not where the future is. You have to look somewhere else. And you know, if that pisses people off, that's their problem. <laughs> All right, let, let's pull back to the, to the theme of this session, which is innovations and the impact, particularly of technology, uh, on our future. Yep. Um, what do you think the most important technologies and or trends are right now that are going to affect the near term, one to three years oh, one to th of, of our... Well, I mean, look, there's, you can go in a, different, diff a million different areas there. I don't think there's any one. I mean, long-term, big picture, the personalized medicine is it. I mean, think about it. The fact that you walk into a drugstore, you buy a bottle of aspirin, and you don't really read the fine print, but it says, you just may be the unlucky MF that dies from this aspirin. <laughs> it's crazy, right? So that's going to change everything, um, and th there's no question about that. Shorter term, you know, I think, again, if everybody's looking in the one place, then to me it's the wrong place. And, you know, we've been doing, since we started with YouTube, we've been doing, um, video online, we started doing you know, broadcast.com in 1996, 15 years now, right? It hasn't changed all that much. And you, know, you go to YouTube to pick on them some more, and believe it or not, 15 years into it, you watch YouTube, and there's a little overlay with an X to click it off, and there's a pre-roll. That's what we've come to, that's advancements. And I think part of the reason is the internet isn't designed to be the future of reruns of Gilligan's Island, right? <laughs> There are networks that are already designed to provide video, and I think that's what a lot of internet video bigots are missing, right? The future of television is television. And I think what's really changing going forward, particularly in communication, is that we're evolving to real-time communications. People want things live, they want things real-time. And when something big happens, you may get it from Twitter, you may get it from a Google Plus stream, you may get it from a Facebook status update, but then when you want more, it's hard to get a lot of people to go to one spot except on television. And I think what a lot of people misunderstand is that television is digital. This isn't 1985 anymore. And so 300 channels and nothing on, but for the most part, those 300 channels are digital, but they run on a network designed to 6.9 video distribution, so it's not going to buffer it. You know it's always going to work. They have access to the same VOD um, hard drives that YouTube uses to serve up you know, on-demand stuff. It's just a better designed network, but now we're starting to get the opportunities to leverage that network. It's like at HDNet. It's all about interactivity, the high def and the net. And I think you're going to see more things develop on the television side of things than on the internet video side. I just think internet video, even though it's scaling, it's growing, is broken. Well, we're running over and it's been an entertaining half an hour. Thank you very much. Please join me in welcoming.